Hey everybody, Evan here from Evans Detailing and Polishing, hanging out at the Renegade Compound. Uh, today we're working on restoration on a lifted truck wheel. Uh, we got my boy Leo over here with his Denali HD. This thing's a beautiful truck, but uh, this wheel here, he got into some gravel and we need to do a full restoration process on it. I'm gonna break down the full entire restoration process on how to clean this thing up and how to get it back polished up. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with sanding this one down. Uh, this thing's pretty rough. We're gonna start with, uh, I think we're gonna be able to get away with some 600. We might have to drop down to 400. Stay tuned in the video for that. But uh, for the pros, I like to start off with a rotary sand. For your novices, do not rotary sand until you're comfortable. Uh, rotary sanding on a wheel like this can do some real damage if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, for the novices, I recommend just getting yourself a DA and DA in all those scratches, dents and dings out. You're going to be a lot more forgiving with a DA than you ever will with a rotary. Now these rotaries, for the pros, run them about 2200 RPM or less and you're going to do your maximum amount of efficiency at 2200 or less. A lot of people want to run them so fast and run them wide open, you don't need to do that. Once we get done with our sanding process and we're comfortable with where we're at, we're going to jump into our buffs, our cuts and colors. Um, I like to start off after I've sanded with an orange. If the wheel wasn't sanded, you can definitely just start off with your yellows and browns and your whites and greens. Um, but this particular situation, since we're sanding it, we're going to start with the orange with a brown just to get that nice deep heavy cut and get rid of the sanding swirls as fast as we possibly can without having to spend too much time on these wheels. Um, a lot of you guys that are buying the kits are buying these with the center plates. Um, buy your safety flange kits. Uh, these black safety flanges will add an extra level of security with these kind of buffs. Um, of course, you guys all know safety is a big thing with me. Uh, for you guys that are doing a lot of buffing, just invest in a good pair of safety, insertable safety flanges. These things are going to last forever and they're really going to do a lot of good work for you. Um, buy your buff centerless, gives an extra level of safety. And what we do is I always recommend a full face respirator, especially if you're a pro. If you're just a novice doing this on the weekend, a weekend warrior style, just maintaining your own wheels, just get yourself a paper respirator mask and get yourself a pair of safety glasses. Not a whole lot of investment and you're just giving yourself that extra level of safety. If you're doing it a lot on weekends, get yourself that full face respirator. Save yourself, save your eyes, be safe about it. As you guys all know, when I get into the buffing process, I use all 6,000 RPM grinders. I'm very comfortable, I've been doing this for a number of years. But for you guys that are just starting off, I recommend starting on the 3500. Not only are the grinders lighter for guys like Garrett that can't quite lift the big grinders, but they work really well. You can get a really good finish with them. The bigger grinders are a little heavier, they will make you a little tired. Your arms will start to cramp up once in a while. I've been doing this a long time, I don't have that problem anymore. But what I do is when I go to polish with the 6000 RPM grinder, I'm going to work it in start at the center, work my way all the way to the outside, and I'll work the outside because once once in a while you catch that outside with a flange or with the, with the end of the shaft, and you don't want to be banging that stuff around, you have to clean it back up again later. Your average everyday guys, your 3,000, 3,500 RPM will do all these same steps. I'm going to do everything today at 6,000 except for my final step. My final step with the white flannel and the green, I'm going to run that at about 2,200, 1,800 right in between there. So when I'm working on these lifted trucks, I like to jack the wheels up and spin them. I can get a real nice even shine on them. A lot of people are asking me, where do I lift these things up? So I'm going to show you real quick. If you're looking close here, we've got our lower control arms. We've got a three ton jack. Uh, this one's a low profile. It doesn't have to be a low profile. A lot of these are lifted. So the lifted ones, you might not be able to reach them with this low profile. This one here actually does reach this one. So I'm going to just put it in on the lower, lower control arm. And I'm just going to jack it up till I see the wheel coming off the ground. Try to lift on a spot on the lower control arm where you see there's a lot of reinforcement. Like this one right here is kind of an A-frame style. I try to lift right on the A so that it's got the maximum amount of pressure without breaking something. Now you see it's off the ground. I can spin that wheel, I can get a nice even shine out of it. All right, first things first, I'm gonna put my respirator on. We're gonna start rotary sanding this thing. I'm gonna try 600 and see how it works. Uh, I think 600 is gonna knock this stuff down real well. So let's get it started.
All right, so now as you can see right here, the rotary took off a lot of heavy material really quick. If you run your hand across it, it's dead smooth right now. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back across with a DA. The DA always seems to polish out a little nicer than the rotary, and I don't have to worry about all these hooks in there. So now I'm just gonna run the DA across it real nice and smooth, just to finish off that last little bit of gloss. Safety up again, and we'll go right back at it. All right, now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for that shine to start coming through. If you look real close here, you can actually start to see a reflection in it. Uh, I usually do the two finger approach, put it up there, check and see if I can see a reflection. If I can see a reflection in there, I know it's ready to polish. Now these ones, like I said, we only had to sand the barrel because we got into some gravel. The flat in here is actually still in really good shape. We're just gonna yellow and brown the center, but we need to get all these sanding scratches out. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit it with the orange and brown. Uh, we're gonna use an orange treated airway. Uh, some of you guys I know have used the fast cuts in the past. I don't like using those, I think they're a cheap gimmick. <laughs> but I use the uh, straight orange. The straight orange is gonna build up the heat I want and give me the finish I want. And then I'm gonna jump into the yellow and brown and we're gonna finish it off with a white and green. But right now, we're just gonna orange and brown this barrel and the outer lip. And then we're gonna grab our yellow and brown. We're gonna start at the center and work our way out. <laughs> All right, when you're breaking in a new buff, you're gonna use a lot more compound just because the buff's stiff. Uh, I don't like to rake my cut buffs. Uh, raking my cut buffs just seems to soften them up. I want my cut buff to stay as stiff as possible for as long as possible. Um, so what I do is I start by applying at the bottom and I wrap it over the top. If you look closely here, you can see I've got the compound all the way down about a half inch on each side. And that's really what I'm looking for. I wanna make sure that it stays on while I'm on there. If I'm just putting it on the face, a lot of it just blows on the ground and that's not what we're looking for. So now that we got this barrel done, now we're gonna jump into the yellow and brown. Uh, yellow and brown is where I would normally start on one of these forged wheels, but like we said, we had to sand this one down. This one needed a full recondition. Um, we got that heavy cut done. As long, now you saw, I did a cross cut on it. I started this way, and I went back this way again the second time. All I'm trying to do is really maximize my shine out of this thing. So by cross cutting like that on a, on a forged wheel, you can really get a nice even finish. And now when we get into the, the secondary cut, we're really gonna start digging into it and you're gonna see a lot of the shine start poking through now before we even get to the color stage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the center and work our way out. And we're only gonna have to go across it one time. I do notice a lot of guys uh, polishing out there when I see a lot of these videos of guys trying to do it themselves. I see a lot of guys working back and forth in and out this way. Um, I don't recommend that. It builds up a lot of heat and works its way through too fast. And a lot of guys don't overlap quite as much as they should. I see a lot of lines kind of zebra striped and Z's um, when I'm out at the shows. But if you start at the outside and work your way all the way in, kind of like a barber pole does, it moves in real nice and slow, you'll leave a nice even shine on it all the time. We don't want to see Z's on our wheels. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at that center and work our way out. Stay tuned.
can see we cut all the way from the center, all the way through the outside. You can really see a lot of clarity starting to come out already. Now what I like to do, a nice little pro tip for you, is I like to put my hand polish on next and wipe it all off as much as possible and then go into my finished coloring stage. Uh, a lot of guys will just go straight into the coloring stage, but I wanna make sure all this last little bit of compound is off before I even get into the coloring stage. Any little excess compound that got left somewhere in here, I wanna make sure I take that off before I get it stuck in my wipe buff. And remember, when we get to the coloring stage, we're gonna spin it anywhere between 1800 and 2200 RPM, white flannel with a green compound. on these American forces, a lot of stuff gets stuck in these letters. These letters are machined pretty heavy and in these little beads all the way around, the compound likes to get stuck in there. Just run across it real quick, just kind of clean it out. Do it around your valve stem real good where you couldn't really get in there with the buffer all that well. I'm just going to wipe it down to kind of thin it out before we go to color just to kind of get off that excess compound. You don't need to get it 100% off, a lot of this is going to come off when I color. All right, so now our final step is this right here, the flannel and our green compound. We're gonna put a little bit of green compound on. We're gonna do the same exact thing as we did with the yellow and the brown. We're gonna start at the center and work our way out. In case we bump into the barrel, we don't have to, wanna have to retouch that up later. Safety again, respirator on, get your grinder going. 2200 RPM or less. All right, now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the rubber and vinyl, I'm gonna spray it directly into the towel so I can wipe off all this excess compound that happened to sling on a tire. I try to not sling as much as I possibly can on there, but this one had some tire dressing on it before, and a little bit of the fibers of the dust from the, from the airways happened to stick to it. So I'm just gonna spray a little bit on this towel and wipe it on so I'm not directly spraying on something I freshly polished. Now you got yourself a nice clean tire and your rims back on point. No more gravel and road rash in there, nice and shiny.